She had the talent to become an all-time great and instilled fear into literally everyone. At 19, she took down the great Serena Williams to win the 2019 US Open final in front of the home crowd and was on a trajectory to unbelievable success until she disappeared. Did her body simply break down from too many injuries? Did she struggle mentally or was there more to it? What really happened to Bianca Andreescu? It's been four long years since Bianca Andreescu's legendary run to win the 2019 US Open. She was on top of the world and had smashed several records as a teenager in her first full year on tour. Here's a super quick story of how she got there. Bianca's entire life has been about tennis. She first picked up the racket when she was seven years old in Romania and later trained at the Ontario Racket Club in Canada before moving to the under 14 National Training Center in Toronto. Impressive performances in the junior circuit in early 2016 meant that she would become world number three as a junior in 2016 before turning pro the following year. Andrescu didn't play any WTA tour level matches in 2018 and she failed to qualify for all four Grand Slams. She fell one match short at both the French Open and Wimbledon, but managed to win two singles titles on the ITF circuit. Andrescu entered into 2019 ranked world number 152 on the WTA tour and had not played a WTA match in over 14 months. She then made a statement at the Auckland Open by beating three top 40 players en route to a runner-up finish at the 250 event. A few weeks later, Andrescu broke into the top 100. It was an auspicious start to the year and things were starting to get real. Bianca then entered into Indian Wells as a wild card and won the tournament in sensational fashion, beating four top 20 players including Alina Svitolina in the semis and Angie Kerber in the finals. With her first WTA title in the bag and 1,000 points added to her ranking, 18-year-old Bianca broke into the top 25 and became the first wildcard women's singles champion in the history of Indian Wells. However, a shoulder injury a week later at Miami forced her out of action for several months. During that time, she tried to make an early return for the French Open, but ultimately withdrew after one match. Bianca then returned to action at the Canadian Open and repeated the magic she had performed earlier in the year. She defeated Jeannie Bouchard, Dasha Kazatkina, Kiki Burtons, Karolina Pliskova, and Sofia Kennan en route to the final. She then beat an injured Serena Williams in the final to win the tournament. I've seen many talented players win smaller events to start out, but now we're dealing with a teenager who's won two Masters 1000s as the first titles of her career. Isn't that ridiculous? And we're just getting started because Andrescu goes on to win the US Open. Although she reached the final without facing a top 10 opponent, she was already 7-0 against top 10 players for the season. Bianca met Serena Williams, who was literally twice her age and was cruising to a straight sets victory after she took the first set 6-3 and was leading 5-1 in the second. But Serena fought back to level things up at 5-5 and with the hostile crowd cheering her mistakes, the match looked like it would go the distance, but Bianca held her nerves to close it out 6-3-7-5. History was made. Bianca Andreescu had become the first Canadian to win a major and the first player to win a major singles title as a teenager since Maria Sharapova in 2006. She also became the first player to win the US Open in their main draw debut and became the highest ranked Canadian in WTA history. By the way, it was a great year for Canadian sports in general because that same year the Toronto Raptors beat the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. Well, Andrescu broke into the top five thanks to her US Open title and it was supposed to be the first of many majors. We thought we were heading into a new era, but everything came crashing down for Andrescu. Oh no. Just as quickly as she made it to the top, Bianca suddenly dropped off. And it's really a combination of many things. After winning her Grand Slam title, Andrescu struggled with a knee injury, and although she finished the year at a career-high world number four, the next couple years brought a lot of question marks about her potential. Andrescu missed the first few months of 2020 due to the knee injury she sustained the previous year. The pandemic then took a swipe at most tournaments for much part of the year. Andrescu finally returned to action for the first time in 15 months at the 2021 Australian Open, but she got dumped there in the second round. She then made a run in Miami, but lost in the final. A series of first-round exits at the French Open and Wimbledon and underwhelming performances here and there pushed Andrescu down the rankings, and she finished the year as world number 46. Again, Bianca missed the Australian Open and the Sunshine Double in 2022, saw early round exits at the French Open in Wimbledon before dealing with a back injury later on. This year, she's re-entered into the top 30 in the rankings thanks to a few runs earlier in the season, but you could still say her results haven't been at their best. BB suffered a terrible ankle injury earlier this year in Miami and had to be taken off the court in a wheelchair. 
It was later confirmed that she had torn two ligaments in her ankle. True to her nature, she was upbeat and positive about the entire situation. When she returned, Bianca went on a three-match losing streak before beating Victoria Azarenka from a set and a breakdown at the French Open. Bianca said that her fighting spirit was back and fans were expectant again, but things didn't go as planned. Bianca pulled out of Cincinnati and the US Open with a stress fracture in her lower back, and it seems like the whole cycle is about to repeat itself. So, how did we get here? To fully understand the problem with Andrescu, there's a few key points we have to remember about her game. Before we get into this next part, I'm excited to announce our new Tennis Plus newsletter. It'll be dropping weekly and covering the latest action on the men's and women's sides on the ATP and WTA Tour. Think of it as your one-stop shop for all the news and updates that we normally don't get to cover here on YouTube. And the best part, right now it is free to join. Andrescu has always played an explosive game and has a variety of shots to back it up. She's the kind of player who will rarely hit two shots in a row the same way. This makes her game difficult to read. She can go flat, with the slice, or with heavy topspin on the forehand and hit a large number of winners off it, since it's clearly her better stroke. 37 forehand winners in her 2019 Indian Wells final is case in point, but it's pretty much the same with her backhand. She could go for power, put angles on the backhand, or use the slice to great effect. And then we have her well-disguised drop shots or change of pace to keep her opponents out of rhythm. At 5'7", Bianca physically reminds you of the likes of Chris Evert and Martina Hingis. And in general, her shot selection is fantastic, and she's also relentless. I also think Bianca moves well and does a really great job getting to the difficult balls. In fact, you could really say her game is a combination of power, finesse, pure technique, it's really exciting to watch. I've made similar videos on Garbina Muguruza and Emma Raducanu. For Emma, it was a combination of poor management, the press, mental health struggles, and physical problems. For Garbina, it was more like a loss of motivation, changed priorities, and an inability to really build the right team around her. For Bianca though, it's not so straightforward. Here's what I think. Bianca's game could be explosive and maybe her body just couldn't handle it. I mean, in her career so far, Bianca's had to deal with a torn adductor muscle, shoulder injuries, a sprained ankle, a stress fracture in her foot, and a lingering back condition. Recently, it appears she had a little problem with her sacroiliac joint. I didn't take anatomy classes, but a quick Google search says that it's the joint that connects the pelvis to the spine. Now, any injury there would likely cause chronic pain and definitely impact one's tennis game. A knee injury ruined Bianca's entire 2020 season, and she played a little over 30 matches in 2021 and 2022. Bianca's injuries have become such a common sight that some detractors have called her a drama queen. Some have even gone as far as accusing her of gamesmanship to gain the edge over opponents, which sucks, really. It's quite sad to see talented players go down frequently with injuries. How many of them can you remember on the ATP and WTA tours? Juan Martin Del Potro, Dominic Thiem, Really, it's unfortunate, and it happens just far too much. But there's also another factor at play, and I'm gonna get into it right now. It's quite normal for a relationship to run its course between a player and a coach. In March 2018, Bianca hired Sylvain Bruneau, a Tennis Canada coach, so that she could have a full-time traveling coach with her. They had great success together in 2019, and Bianca was on top of the world. Fast forward to 2021, and Bianca ends their partnership after falling in the first round of the French Open. She said it was a mutual decision, but we know how that goes. It just seems like coaches are hired to be fired these days. Bianca then hired Sven Groneveld, a veteran who has coached top players like Maria Sharapova, Caroline Wozniacki, and Anna Ivanovich. They both worked together for a year and ended things in 2022 at a time when Bianca's form was promising. She then referred to an old coach, Christophe Lambert, in November last year as she began her off-season training. Lambert had been working as a high-performance tennis director for Tennis New Zealand, but resigned from the role to team up with Bibi. Lambert, however, worked with Andrescu during her junior days, so their partnership isn't entirely new. This season, she's 15 and 16 at the time of this recording, so again, probably not where she wants to be at the moment. But sometimes, you can't help but wonder what it is about the coaching merry-go-round on the WTA Tour. It's like these coaches are brought in and expected to get results instantly, or they're at risk of getting fired, even when a player is injured. Now, that being said, what is the right time frame to give a coach before sacking them? We could also point to mental health struggles as a reason for Bianca Andreescu's slump. A long injury absence cut short her momentum at the height of her success, and she was out for almost 16 months. But it was her mental health battles that delivered the decisive blow. Bianca couldn't deal with the fame and stardom that came along with her success on court, and it really got to her and she decided to walk away from the game. 
It was really one of the lowest points of her career. Don't believe me? Here's exactly what she said. I basically, I just wanted to quit because I didn't love the game anymore. I would literally lock myself in my room for like a full day and not talk to anyone. At the end of 2021, Bianca announced an indefinite break from tennis to address her mental health. She took a six-month break to deal with those issues, and now she's come back stronger and is using her platform to speak on the importance of mental health. She personally says she does a lot of meditation and creative visualization to help her get through the day. At 23, Bianca Andrescu is still at the beginning of her exciting career, and she has already made an indelible mark on the sport. Despite having a slump in the last few years, Andrescu has managed to finish the season in the top 50 in the same time frame. So it's probably not the worst thing in the world to go back to the drawing board and see how she can recapture some of that magic of 2019. Personally, I still think Bianca does have a lot of tennis in her, and at just 23 years old, the sky's still the limit. Who says she can't become number one in the coming years? What has happened to her again? A litany of ill-timed injuries, mental health struggles, loss of momentum, and what else? It isn't entirely new, so she could take inspiration from legends in the game, some of whom have navigated similarly difficult spells throughout their careers and also bounced back. She might have to make a couple of tweaks to her physical training, maybe a few tweaks to her game, whatever works. Bianca isn't overrated, and she isn't a one-hit wonder. At least I think so. It's also way too early to judge, and she definitely has what it takes to work her way back to the very top. There's no telling what a healthy Bianca Andrescu can do on the court. What do you expect of Bianca Andrescu's return? Meanwhile, it's a little bit different for Garbina Muguruza. Is she coming back to the sport? Watch our next video to find out.